suppose five and a half, whatever, six years ago, I went from one side of the country or one end of the country to the other, left school and, and left home and uh, came up here. And, and the first thing I found was one I couldn't really understand people, which was which was actually quite daunting. It made me feel a bit more homesick than uh, than uh, than ever really. But then I started to get used to people, and he found just so friendly. fly half and he's one of the best fly halves in the world if not the best we admire his sporting talent <laughs> he seems like a very good player <laughs> and i have to say he's got some rather nice legs <laughs> i think he's brilliant he's an absolute brilliant kicker one of the best <laughs> i'd be lying if i didn't say he was not handsome <laughs> oh well i like his rugby playing especially the kicking that he does yes very good Thank you. As soon as I get home, I'm yeah, I'm definitely home, and that's the end of it. There's, yeah, there doesn't have to be any more distractions, noise, or anything. I can, I can do what I want to do, and it's, uh, I do need that time to wind down. Otherwise, I, yeah, I just, I'd, uh, I'd burn myself out. I think. So the men are born. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Not too bad. No problem relaxing here. No, quite. It's normally blowing a gale. Actually, so you've uh, you've picked a fantastic day for it. Dad seems to love getting out on the lawn, so you've caught it in good shape. The house is just full of uh, full of rugby kit, really. Do your mates come up very often from back home? Um, I difficult to when they come up back home because everyone back home gets weekends off, and I I suppose we we. That's my most intense time, and it's it's impossible to spend time with people when you're so engrossed in things. But uh, I've, uh, we get people from the the club, just from the guys occasionally, just love to sort of come out here and uh, and join us for a bit, and stay over for a couple of days, and have a bit of a different life. So cool. come over and knock them out. So come in. first knowledge of him was, was really via Steve Bates um, when Steve was teaching at Lord Wandsworth College and we were at Wasps playing together. Um, it was in the days when Steve Bates, Dean Ryan and myself were sort of playing 8, 9 and 10 at Wasps. Johnny would probably be, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 at the time. I did a teaching job at Lord Wandsworth College when he was in the just starting the low six. So that would have been starting in the September of 95. So about eight or nine years ago, when Steve brought him to our attention and said, oh, I've got this kid at the school who's pretty, pretty fantastic, you know, I think he's going to go the whole way. 
and that was the start point really for us to keep an eye on him. This is all I've ever wanted to do. I'm not sure outside of sports and things like that. I'm not sure I'm actually that good at other things. You know, in terms of in terms of life skills, um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm up to much. And I've always just wanted to. I'm at my happiest, and I'm and all I ever want to do is just be doing something active in a sort of happy, you know, fun environment. And then when I come out of that, it's normally when I find myself in a bit of bother. As a family, sort of four between Johnny and I, mum and dad were very close. Parents have always been more on the friends side of things than, than how you probably look at parents. We talk just about everything. There's not a lot we don't talk about. And stuff we don't talk about, we probably wouldn't want to talk to each other about anyway. The thing was, when you first came up here, he came straight from school and to led a very sort of protected life, you know. So, like, his first trip to the supermarket, he phoned us up from the supermarket saying, um, oh, boy, he'd taken his checkbook because he'd just got a bank account, but did he need his passport? <laughs> you know, things like that. Now, geez, I must be a lousy mom. <laughs> he thinks he needs his passport at the supermarket. <laughs> A classic example, which you probably get angry for me saying, was a computer game. And he'd taken time to work out how to do all these special moves and win games, and my ploy was to throw the ball to him, punch him, take the ball off and punch the next guy. I ended up winning, and he went down to the bottom of the garden and sat by the rhubarb patch for an hour and a half, sulking. So we sort of, from then on, made a decision not to compete against each other at anything, or at least make sure we're on the same team. very good at ball games you know, straight away as soon as they sort of picked up a bat or kicked a ball or something it was well on the way so we just let them get on with it and provided as many outlets for them as possible I first met Johnny at Farnham Rugby Club when he was uh, an under eight he just had vision he had good hands uh, all round ability uh, in fact when he wasn't around the guys in the team uh, thought there was they would go out and perhaps they were going to lose and he was an inspiration. Times when he's been down the club practicing on his own, he's had Sparks, his brother down there, Phil, his father down there, and just spent hours and hours and hours on the training park. You can have the most of the talent in the world, but if you're not prepared to work and you're not prepared to develop that talent, you'll never reach the top. There's a lot of mementos of Johnny in the clubhouse, photographs, and everyone's sort of seen the odd films that we've had in the past. We took a lot of video footage when Johnny's age group played at Twickenham. Very special for the club and very special for the boys who actually took place then. First met uh, Johnny as a student teacher when he was about 12, I think it was, and, and coached in rugby for two years. Basically, we used to kick together most sort of lunch times or after school just to practice. One day he decided that he wanted to have a competition, which he actually gave me a bit of a shoeing on, then asked me if uh, I'd like to go left-footed, which... I couldn't kick with my left foot, save my life. And I said, just turned around and said, why is that? And he said, I'm left-footed. So to be beaten by a 12-year-old with his wrong foot was quite, a, quite embarrassing. Probably age 14, there was a little mission statement he wrote, which was to be the best and most respected fly half in the world. I go to watch my brother play, he comes to watch me play. Now we play together, which is fantastic. Uh, and Dad's looking after us both, so, um, you know, it's kind of been strange the way it's all come about um, from such early days, and now here we are doing exactly the same thing about 20 years down the line.